Good evening. As we celebrate, please remember to observe social distancing, including when processing to communion. We are asking those who wish to receive communion on the tongue if you could please come up at the very end of Father Chris's communion line. The parish office needs your email address. We continue to provide updates, changes, news, and events through email. Please call the parish office or email us with your email address. And a reminder, script is available at the parish office during regular office hours. Please call ahead with your order. Please stand. <laughs> Let's begin with the sign of our faith in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And, and my brothers and sisters, we'll have the lighting and the blessing of the Easter candle. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son Jesus Christ. He is the Emmanuel, the hope of all peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And Christ continues to enrich and lighten our lives in many different ways. So as we prepare to enter more deeply into this season, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you give us hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you strengthen us with faith. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you prepare us for your return. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with the righteous deeds at his coming. 
so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess a heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of our, your servants, the tribes of your heritage. O that you may rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you, while you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they are not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eyes ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. That you might need us doing right, that we are mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people, all our good deeds like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us, and we have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. The name speak to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give you thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus and that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, 
so that you were not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation for our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you are called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. I think before I start with the homily, I'll give a few updates. Gosh, a lot of prayers that people need. Uh, Deacon Ron and Deacon Mike both made it through the surgeries fine. We aren't sure how it came out with Deacon Ron. We had, haven't heard too much on it yet. Uh, Deacon Mike had a double bypass, and he is doing pretty good. But there's also other prayers. Uh, pa Father Paul Fagan is asking for prayers. He ended up with a, a blood clot on his lung, and so he's asking for prayers. Uh, of course, then um, Father Gene Horning uh, passed away. And then also did uh, George Allen. George Allen, uh, of course, uh, Jan is a, uh, one of the uh, teacher's aides in the school. And his funeral will be on Saturday at 11 o'clock. So we, of course, keep everybody in prayer. But one of the things that I also noticed as, as a service began here, kind of got off on the wrong foot in a way. And I was thinking about it, even as I went up to bless the Advent wreath there, 
I had two ribbons to set for the, for the prayer that was there. There was actually an introductory prayer that I skipped. And as I was saying the prayer, I thought, you know, that's kind of like the Advent season, isn't it? Sometimes we just don't get off on the right foot, get things going, headed in the right direction. Seems like there's always so many things that are coming at us that can tie us up in many ways. For some, I suppose it would be, uh, might even be a surprise that we're starting a new liturgical year. But we still have that somewhat familiar theme that we left from last year even, the last liturgical year. We close it by that, come, looking for that coming of Christ the King. We were looking into the future, into a future time when Christ would come. And then he would come as a ruler and a judge for all eternity. The final end of Christ's coming is also the time when we will once again be reunited with our body. But there is a lot which happens between our life here and when we'll be re reunited with our bodies. I had read even this morning in, from St. Augustine in his, one of the sermons that he gave about our time on here on earth and that which is yet to come. He said, you have entered upon a time of trial, but you will come to no harm. God will bring you through it safely. You are like a piece of pottery shaped by instruction, fired by tribulation. One can only recognize in the anticipated time where we will enter into what will be for all eternity. But this week we begin the Advent season. A season which I'm afraid gets overlooked in many different ways and pushed aside in our modern times. It seems that once Halloween comes, and even before it, the focus turns directly to Christmas and that season. If there are plans for the Advent season, they are easily caught up in the planning for Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving holiday and the preparations which are to be made for the Christmas. But that's not even all wrong. Because we are called to look towards the future and what it, that is, which is approaching. But that's only part of it. You see in our first reading from Isaiah, it's from the third book of Isaiah. In Isaiah, the people have returned from being in exile by, a Babylon, by the Babylonians. God had used a foreign king to help free them. And now that they're back home, the author has looked over all the trials and the ways in which a people have wandered from God's ways. He is presently looking to God as a father, a redeemer who has been faithful and one who is worthy of all his praise. But the author is also questioning, why would he allow his chosen people to wander so far from him at least the tribes which were left. Some of them had been hauled off and it would disappear and would no longer be. The author says, God, you have displayed your power and the earth herself has quaked before you. No other people has ever heard or seen anything like you, God. If only we could do what is right with you and be mindful of you in what we do. All very nice. But then the author comes to that next part. Behold, you are angry. And I guess I need to ask, can God really be angry? An all-perfect God, an all-loving, an all-merciful God, a God who knows what we need and how we, well, too often have to rediscover it. But what we know what comes from God is love and mercy. To be experienced by us, 
And uh, we are to see that as anger or a harsh treatment. The thing, we can, the thing that can help us to express the way in which God works in our lives is to look at Jesus. We can look at him right there on the cross. We can discover the answer to how God works in our lives. Jesus, in all of his humanity, cries out, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? It may not be in Christian eyes, anger by God, but we see Jesus in his humanity and despair. But why would a father allow something like this or want this to happen to his son? But then we look at his glorious nature and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. To see sin and the consequences of it, they are true. And we are all in them. We all experience them. We all have to learn from them. And what has come down to us as the understanding through the millenniums. We need to learn from the prophet and what rings true. We are like those polluted rags which get all dried up and wither away and blow like uh, dried leaves. The answer to this is we have to experience one thing. We have to experience our God. Or we can we even know and even try to do all the right things. But until we experience him and continue to experience him, we can easily be carried away on the wings of time. Our psalmist also repeats us much of the same things. It's Psalm 80. It's from a different time and possibly even a different place. But the image of being grafted onto the vine, how we continually need to be grafted onto Christ. The reality is Jesus has pointed us as watchmen as gatekeepers, not really knowing when he will return, but always looking to him, experience him in, his, him in our lives. It has to be him who helps to shape and mold each and every one of us. And so it is with the Advent season, a season of penance where we allow God to continue to shape and mold our hearts and our lives. Augustine would say in a homily, also in that homily, at present your body receives its life from the soul, but then it will receive it from the spirit. May by the grace of our God, all our souls be shining bright at the coming of our Lord.
us rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We begin this season of Advent with trust in God's love for us. Let's present him with our needs and the needs of our world. For the church, may the Lord look graciously upon us as we proclaim the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may Christ strengthen their conviction as servant leaders for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who face hunger and malnutrition, may God grant them strength and provide the means for them to obtain their daily bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering at home, caused by the stress of the pandemic, may God bring them peace and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially our loved ones whom we remember during the month of November. May God bring them home to be with him forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mary Ann Fleury, whom we remember at this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pause to add your own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join in the vocation prayer. O oh God, God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole heart, heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you your own in love. Bless our families and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, our Father, hear these prayers of your people and grant them in accordance with your holy will. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us a prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us a way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and given you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and given you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Basil and St. Benedict, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your, your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and James our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. The Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. Turn to my room. Only say the word, and my soul shall. The body of Christ for the sake of the church.
yours. A prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just a few announcements course continue to keep uh, our deacons in prayer and along with everybody else that are that's suffering in so many different ways uh, please note uh, the, in the bulletin there's a drive through we're gonna have a drive through co cookie walk a drive through cookie walk <laughs> insert uh, it'll be in this week's bulletin if you are able to donate or ho any homemade cookies or uh, candies, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, also, we're asking to remember uh, Killian Bershite, a member of our parish who continues his mission with Net Ministries. That's the National Evangelization Team. Uh, some of you may remember that when they were here, uh, another team was here. Uh, his, his fundraising hasn't been that great, uh, but we're looking for donations towards his ministry and it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, Killian will also be here on the weekend of December 19th to share his stories. Uh, also, uh, just to remind people to go out to Conwell Street and out the parking lot exit first to pro prevent that cross traffic in the uh, aisleways, and then the King Street after that. I think it's a blessing too. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God. Yep. And everybody.